Hi, I'm Daryl Cagle, and this is the Cagle Cast, where we're all about political cartoons. And we have three great political cartoonists here today to talk about their favorite Trump cartoons. Hayo de Reiger is a brilliant Dutch cartoonist from Harlem, and he draws for the HRC Handelsblad newspaper, which we love because they subscribe to our Cagle Cartoons cartoon service and run our cartoons all the time. Nice to have you here, Hayo. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, this wonderful Dave, show. <laughs> Dave Womond is incredibly prolific. He draws two comics, Reality Check and Day by Dave, and he's a prolific illustrator. He does puzzles, greeting cards, and lots of top-selling children's books, and he just won the Silver Rubin Award from the National Cartoonist Society for Best Advertising Cartoonist of the Year. So wow. congratulations, Dave. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. And Taylor Jones is a brilliant caricaturist. Taylor draws for the Hoover Digest at Stanford University. He was a staff cartoonist for many years for the El Nuevo Dia newspaper in Puerto Rico, and he drew for many years for U.S. News and World Report magazine. And he's won a ton of awards, too. Nice to have you back, Taylor. <laughs> you drew so many great Trump cartoons that we had to have you back two times in a row just because <laughs> there's just too many great Trump cartoons oh, well, for me, Taylor. I wish editors were happier with them, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is this is sound with that, huh? This uh, I don't have any sound. Uh, no, 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 I, don't, I know, I know. But it's they're supposed to be the do 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 doom. But they all they are all characters, so that it wasn't really uh so much of trouble. <laughs> yeah, what a crazy bunch. Yeah. Well they're they're creepy and they're kooky oh, and mysterious yeah. and spooky and altogether ooky. <laughs> I, I think this is just wonderful. And the animation is funny. And I've got to say, I'm really impressed with this. And Thank you. they really they really do fit those roles. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, got, I got some complaints because people were angry because the, the real, or the real, the Adams family is actually, they are really nice people. And they're not... <laughs> They're not <laughs> as yeah. evil as the Trump family, the Trump yeah. clan. So that's, that's the comparison I, I shouldn't have made, uh, I think. An, uh, analogy. Well, it makes me laugh. All right. This well, is a hilarious yeah. cartoon. I think this is wonderful. Uh, this is uh, the Prez dispenser with hydroxychloroquine. Wonderful thing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this only works if it's animated, I guess. Right. I wonder if there is a Trump head on, on one of the Prez dispensers. Ooh, that would... That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is hilarious. Wonderful work, Kayo. Thanks. Um, yeah, very good. Oh yeah, th this one is from a long time. It was the when he said it was all a big hoax, mm -hmm. the COVID. But then he got it himself, right? And then he saw the world ending. And uh, but he he recovered somehow. Yeah. And now he's back to it's all a big hoax again. So. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> so, yeah exactly. that makes the weather vane uh, imagery yeah. all the more fitting. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. This is a great one. <laughs> oh yeah, this was when um, Twitter decided to uh, place fact checks on the tweets, right? Yeah, some time ago. Well, we've never been able to get people to buy animations from us. And so many cartoonists want to do animated editorial cartoons. There hasn't been a market for it. You people know, love them. Yeah, which I is think weird great. in a way. Yeah, because it's uh, nice to have on the website, mm -hmm. right? In, in a newspaper, it's difficult, I understand, but on a website, yeah. Uh, this is, yeah, the super simple, simplest animation. is just one lakh, as you see. And it's, I think, three or four frames only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you can do this on, a, on an iPad very easily, or even Photoshop has this function now, where you can just uh, animate your, uh, well, you, you take a portion of the, of, of the drawing mm -hmm. and you put it in different positions, like frames. Right. So yeah. wonderful Impressive. stuff, Hayo. I'm going to go into some Thank of your- Thank you very much, appreciate it. Yes, some Thanks of your, so. your regular cartoons here. So uh, Hayo, hi here you've got the Trump cave man dragging the Statue of Liberty. Uh, yeah, yeah, Liberty's been suffering. Kind of a classic uh, image, maybe. Yeah. He was considered a, a kind of a ignorant, dumb ass caveman, right? Well, well, also in his relationship no. with women. Yeah. Um, exactly. You know, some of our cartoonists, we, we call some foreign cartoonists like Dave American cartoonists in order to get the editors to be more interested in their work. And we could do that with a good deal of your cartoons, Hayo. That would be a big boost for mm -hmm. you. For some reason, the editors just don't pay much attention to the foreign cartoonists just because yeah. they're foreign. Nothing to do with the cartoons much of the time. That's, uh, that's weird, though. Yeah. Well, America's mm -hmm. funny that way. It's always yeah. been like that. 
a kind of nationalistic uh, thing or well, uh, like maybe you know we see the same thing around the world um other yeah. countries don't want american cartoons just because they're american yeah uh, really uh, it's interesting no, but but i think it's not about what what's depicted but who who made well, it i think i think uh, uh, just add one thing here i think that's sort of historical in the u.s case in that there's something about it's like of course some were forcibly brought here but people who come here it's like okay you're done with that now you're done with all of what was before and and we have a very narrow view of of the rest of the world well i see it in my traffic stats um readers aren't interested in foreign issues on the website just in looking at the cartoons anyway this is uh this is lovely yeah. hi uh, thank you yeah. Uh, you know, he it's, is. I, I believe it's. It was about the steel. He, he wanted to have a steel war or something, right? It's been a long time ago already. Oh, yeah. yeah, we have um, um, tariffs on steel. I don't think we got any cartoons oh. from American cartoonists really? about tariffs on yeah. steel. <laughs> Nobody here cared about it. It's, it's funny because you know this is. I think Trump engaged in the biggest tariff stuff since about the 1920s. You know that was mm -hmm. a standard in American politics and history for much of our history. I love the horse yeah. in this. It's beautifully done, Hayo. Thank you. Yeah, well, that should re represent America, though. But uh, yeah. <laughs> This is a very nice one. Trump and Xi Jinping blaming him. You know, uh, I think if an American cartoonist had drawn this, it would have been a baseball reference. Oh, yeah, of course. No? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, okay. this was, uh, my meaning was a bit more uh, Dennis the Menace, uh, Dennis the Menace-like. Yeah, Dennis the Menace like hits that. his baseball yeah. through Mr. Wilson's. Oh, it's also Dennis time. the Menace, yeah. <laughs> I love, I love that Trump. He's perfect. You can't do any better than that. It is a wonderful Trump. Yeah. A wonderful Xi Jinping too. Now, um, oh. I love this sorry, Trump, guys. but I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't entirely understand the pencil. Uh, no, this is a, it's a weird one. This one, uh, this was intended to be uh, for the cartoonists, so that the cartoonists. Uh, uh, are Skew. literally having a roast yeah. of uh, on Trump. Mm. Oh, was this like and, for uh, a cartoonist organization or a group? Yeah, or? it was. Yeah, and I thought I I I, uh, I'll, I would send it in here because maybe it's um, it's interesting because uh, well it it is he is a gift like it, a gift that keeps giving right this <laughs> Trump guy. Yeah. He's like a he's like a wreck doll you 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 love to hate you can just. Take him and put him in any situation and uh, ju just own, own him. It's, thank kind of. it's Thanksgiving every day, Hayo, with Trump. It is. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. like Fun. five times in one day, he gives you five things in, all in a <laughs> yeah. row. Well, you know, this yeah, is hard, it's hard to keep up. Yeah. Yeah. I should say, this has been very frustrating for us because editors here in the USA have not been printing. Trump cartoons. And of course, it's the favorite thing for artists to do. Now, you know, it's different on the web. You put your Trump cartoon up on your social media and it gets a lot of attention and mm -hmm. people are interested. And I think our last podcast that we did on Trump has been successful. We've been picking up subscribers mm -hmm. and getting interest from that. That's why I want to keep doing them. Also, because the cartoonists have so many Trumps and everybody can show just their own cartoons and talk about their own work. And that's great. But it is frustrating that the editors don't don't yeah. print them. The Trump fatigue, maybe. Yes. I, amongst the publishers. I feel it as a cartoonist. I, I really don't like drawing him anymore. No. You know, I'll do it. But a uh, uh, question, I have a question for Dave. On your side of the border, how successful is Trump in, in pushing everything else off the screen? Off the well, news? let me say that Dave is a cartoonist in Canada. He works from Calgary. Uh, I would say uh, we hear about him nonstop, just like you guys. Oh. Like it's, uh, <laughs> you know, we have uh, Tr Trudeau in the headlines now and then, but Trump takes over pretty much everything. And wow. and we, we're <laughs> quite concerned about some of the things going on with, we're worried about the, you guys are the beacon of democracy. So yeah. if you go down, then we all go down. So, you know, get, get a little worried about it. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I look at Canada as more of the shining star now. Well, usually I what happens in the U.S. comes to us pretty soon after. So that's why, uh, you know, yeah. we, we tend to follow what's going on there. So you know, The rest the of last... the world, right? Everyone yeah, is yeah, kind exactly. of following the states. Well, you've got great health care compared to us. <laughs> You've got all kinds of things that work compared to us. The, that's that's the, the myth. Of... <laughs> yeah, that's the myth. They say we drink maple syrup and have great health care, but I don't I don't drink maple <laughs> syrup. <laughs> and I could tell you long stories about some of the health care things, but I won't get really? into it now. And you are a hell of a lot more polite. As a people. Oh. 
Well, you, of course, you had that Toronto had that Mayor Ford. He wasn't particularly polite. No, no, no. He was sort of a Trump character. <laughs> yeah. Then. Ooh, yeah. yeah. What was his name? What, Rob what, Ford. Rob yeah. Ford. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And now his brother's the uh, premier of the province now, and he's he's kind of uh, following in his footsteps a little bit. So. <laughs> he's a more toned down version. Oh, this is great. This oh, is yeah, very funny. This is Minion Kim Jong Un. And I think this is hilarious. It, you know, it's even funny that you have them moved up from the bottom of the page. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it, I'm so lazy. Uh, if, I, if I don't have to draw the whole, the whole guy, then uh, better not. <laughs> you, can, you can get away move with up the page. Trump like this, you know? Yeah. So here's Pied Piper Trump leading hey. the media. You know, it's only the conservative media that he actually leads, but they do all chase after him. Yes, we are all following him. We have a podcast about Trump now. So yeah, you've got a great graphic sense in all of these cartoons. Thank you. Yeah, Thank really you. Appreciate very it. Much. Superior. And I also like that you don't put a lot of any words that I've seen in the cartoons, which is nice yeah. to just kind of let yourself tell the story when you look at it. So. I tend not to do any words. I have, mm -hmm. I believe, sent in one con cartoon with words, and it's not really it's not really good, but we'll see it later on. Oh, I'm, you I'm the opposite. I cram, cram too much uh, word, word. I have to edit myself, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this actually is, I think, a, a cartoonist thing, that mm -hmm. cartoonists really admire the cartoons with no words, but yeah, I haven't noticed a correlation with what editors choose to print. Uh, mm. The editors don't seem to mind the wordy cartoons. Mm. I'm kind of guessing the foreign editors don't like wordy American cartoons. Mm -hmm. This cartoon needs no translation, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say, people look at on their phones a lot of the time, right? So if there's a bunch of words, it's hard for them to take it in. It's a nice sort of a one hit look and it's like, hey, I get it right away. So, yeah. yeah, we also yeah. have a disadvantage in that we're stuck in this wide format because that's the traditional mm -hmm. hole that newspapers leave for editorial cartoons. And that makes them not display that well on the phone because mm -hmm. people usually have the portrait tall view. And I see a lot of cartoonists are trying to do cartoons more in this square kind of format for phones yeah. and I do notice that those get reprinted less among our newspapers mm -hmm. because they just don't fit the whole they've set their pages up so that they are automated and they don't really have the flexibility to change that space they just want to drop something in there so something mm -hmm. that's not the right shape just gets overlooked so what's uh, the best shape so it's a, a, a landscape or portrait yeah, landscape. And also, it, this it's just fun that you have this pushed off to the left. That's, yeah, don't, that's don't know why, really. Yeah. Don't know why. Maybe <laughs> you don't know why. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> well, it shows that he's, uh, you know, he's got places to go. I mean, there's, he's, oh, he's maybe, on the move. Maybe it could be, I, I, I made this for an article. And then the, ah. the, 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 mm -hmm. the text would be on the site or something like that. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, that was my first thought as like yeah. as an illustrator i think oh that's where they put the copy so. yeah yeah probably they did yeah yeah well i would say don't admit that tell us about this one maybe this is also for an article i don't really remember but it's so nice that, that there's such clear analogies or metaphors for like the gop or for mm -hmm. these uh, parties right just draw an elephant and you know it's it's uh, for the conservatives for, you know, we, uh, just did a, we just did an exhibition at Saint-Just of donkeys and elephants. The people at the museum there did all kinds of work to explain donkeys and elephants to the people there because they, they don't make sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you don't hesitate to draw elephants. No, uh, do your no. readers complain? Does everybody know donkeys and Every, elephants just as well? Yeah, well, here in the Netherlands, they do, I guess. Maybe it's in France different because they're, they're more introspective in the country. They, they, they tend to be much more bothered with uh, French business than with American or international business. And I think in the Netherlands, we look more to the West, I think. Hayo, does States, the and... Netherlands have any particular animal or kind of mascots for various political parties that, that you just associate or movements that you associate with? Not really, no. We have a national symbol that's the lion, but that's about it. Mm. We don't have we don't have a bipartisan, we don't have a, only two parties. We have a lot of parties, of right. course. But we uh, have it's interesting about right that, thing. yeah about introspection we've got hardly any clients in france only a couple of cartoonists from france that don't contribute very often but we've got six cartoonists from the netherlands and we've got newspapers Crazy. like the nrc handelsblad that subscribes to our work in the netherlands yeah. and it's interesting that the netherlands is such a cartoon friendly country compared yeah. to all the rest of europe yeah it's true hmm. yeah 
I went to a cartoon dinner party yesterday with a lot of cartoonists. It's, it's really, like you say, it's super uh, cartoon friendly. Yeah, cartoonist friendly. Orange life matters. Trump holds the sign. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's, so just... it's about him, right? It's always about him. So yeah, you know, it's funny yeah. that the long tie has even been noticed by cartoonist abroad. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I love the spray paint uh, orange along his neckline yeah. there. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> What a guy. Also, but, but the it, blue suit. Right. We talked about his color scheme on the last podcast. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. But, but again, right, it's, it's like this, this doll you can put in any position. You have to kind of, if you have him, you can own him and you can put him everywhere. So yeah. it, long tie, orange face, weird hair. That's it. <laughs> you know, it's funny that, it's funny that, that Trump, who is obese and uh, gross in many ways, yet comes off as more vital than Biden, but that's a real problem for Biden. Mm -hmm. he, True. Who yeah. seems like he's 80 going on 95. Yeah. yeah. And then you see pictures sometimes of Biden riding the bike and then Trump, who's, uh, you know, pretty much out of shape. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're only really three years different in age. And I think four well, years, what, yeah. What's, yeah, well, well four the pictures years, yeah. of him riding a bike yeah. are usually when he's falling down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Hayo, here you've got uh, Mike Pence sticking his head up Trump's butt. And then in the next uh, picture, the fly is on his head saying this hair smells so good. You yeah. recall that dominated the news for a day where a fly was walking around on Pence's head. I think, it, was he at the debate, debate. or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it kept his, landing on it. Yeah. Stayed there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is funny. It took me a minute to quite figure out what was going on. I thought, did, did Hayo put two cartoons on here? That's I've never seen that before. That's like everyone does the fly and pence joke. But that's that's the best one I've seen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, I was I was I felt sorry I had to put some words there because I I didn't know how to to get around. But uh... you probably could have done without the words. Ah, uh, maybe. You I think? I think well, maybe no, I put some stink good. lines coming off or something. Oh, yeah. maybe, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think otherwise you'd have had to have some brown up there. <laughs> uh oh, then it's not getting printed for sure. <laughs> no, this is not getting printed, so it's. Uh, they used to call those not. stink lines wafteroons. Mm. Oh, no. Really? That's a new one on me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so here winter, spring, summer, and fall in Trump Falls. Yeah. This is an optimistic cartoon. It's the Four Seasons, remember? Yeah. Does he really fall, though? No. Well, and, and is this a cartoon about oil? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't remember. So, you know, we, we want to get this podcast, podcast used in schools, mm -hmm. and the kids uh, say, explain the cartoon to me, yeah. and they have to write an essay about it. And I, I think it's kind of instructive oh. that sometimes the cartoonist doesn't remember what it's about. I don't about. remember now. Was and, there an oil uh, spill some, some, sometime? Well, just, he, you know, he's all for opening up further leasing for, you know, uh, for oil rigs in the north slope of Alaska and every, pretty much everywhere. Yeah, and this—that's what I would think. I mean, as you can see that you can see where the tires are going through mm -hmm. the oil. So, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good enough explanation for me. Yeah, right. for me so too. He just wants, Thanks. He wants to go where the oil is. <laughs> right. That's what, regardless of the ball being behind him. Right. Yeah, I just noticed it. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. So you had Trump dragging liberty. Here's Trump wrestling justice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's and again, you can put Trump in a really nice, tight-fitting suit with golden oh, yeah. boots. That's what you can do as a cartoonist, right? Okay, this is a border wall cartoon. Yeah. The border wall wasn't quite fitting into what Trump wanted to get yeah. done. Wow. I want a wall. And the famous Trump, uh, Trump pout there too. This is a, a very nice cartoon. It's the American flag with Trump putting back the popular protests. And well, popular protests, or are those just no. every man? Or yeah. are they immigrants? They were or... immigrants. Yeah. Yeah. It's immigrants. You've got immigrants uh, with a shopping cart. I guess that's moving their stuff and mm -hmm. they're carrying things because they're immigrants. Yeah. And they're yeah. kind of holding up, you know, it's like they're holding up society because of America being a nation of immigrants. Of course, a standoff with the border patrol. Mm -hmm. I just assumed that this was protests. You know, you think of him holding up the Bible and uh, oh, putting yeah. down the protests uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, in Washington and so much focus of the right on protests in Portland and Black Lives Matter and how intolerant they are of that yeah but again so much so so much happened mm -hmm. so many things you can like put put this 
Well, it, it involves a lot of people, so you can put it on all these things, right? So it's an all-purpose cartoon. Exactly, yeah. Gotta okay. have some of those, yeah, for, just in case. Taylor, we're moving on to you. Thank you, Hayo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, like this you. is really very funny. You've got a giant <laughs> truck with a Trump sticker on it, big red truck, and the little <laughs> blue liberals saying, they said there were two spaces left as a Trump took up two spaces. That's really very funny. <laughs> I think it's true, That's true. Good. You know, yeah. especially down here in Florida, you can kind of tell. Just by oh, I think it's doesn't, like doesn't we we get that here here in Los Angeles. You think <laughs> this is a blue spot, but we've got all of these rude Trumpy people that take the two places with their giant <laughs> truck and a coexist like sticker on the on the back. Yeah, exactly. Yes, you have anything like this in Canada? I was going to say we have obnoxious people taking up two spots, but I don't know if they're Trump trucks or not. They're just we like the big trucks up here. That's for sure. I don't know. You're in Calgary. You've got a lot of right wing there, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah do. absolutely. I've long thought that that parking lot, for safety's sake, should be segregated between trucks and SUVs on one side and then smaller vehicles like the car I drive so that, you know, it's not a hazard. Yeah, yeah you try to back idea. out between two big trucks with a little car. Yeah, I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'll just title this podcast, uh, Taylor in Favor of Segregation. <laughs> <laughs> so here you've got Trump crucified. He's hanging on the cross, the top secret up at the top. And he says, this vicious prosecution is a travesty of justice. And someone says, heck, you nailed yourself up there. You're still clutching the hammer. You know, Taylor, we all draw crucifixion cartoons and they just, nobody prints them. <laughs> no. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I do know why. It's a shame because, you know, when I was drawing cartoons for El Nuevo Dia in Puerto Rico, um, I had to be, I could really, for instance, I could get away with a cartoon that someone could be upset because of a Jewish theme or maybe looks like it's maybe too, you know, not, you know what I mean? So you got to be careful. But down there, that was fine. The problem was dealing with the Catholicism and the Pope. I had to be very careful. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, it's one of the right-wing talking points that the media can bash Christians, but not other religions. You it's know, if you true. hadn't put blood on his hands, three more papers would have printed this. And yet, how can you, I, you know, I realize that, Daryl, but how can you have the nails through the hands yeah. without blood, you know? I mean, mm. you can find some churches where they'll, they actually have that, you know? What were you saying, Daryl, on the last podcast? I think you said they don't print cartoons with blood or drool or there was a, a third thing too there was <laughs> oh well there's there's, poop. there's yeah. urine there's poop. Yes, vomit <laughs> there's poop uh okay, we there's can make a list of bodily <laughs> yeah. okay. no they don't like any of them they're they're fairly tolerant of sweat I'll keep that in mind and uh hmm. interesting vomit is regarded differently in different countries britain <laughs> they're they're really turned off by vomit and wow. we can draw, we can get away with vomit cartoons here much more than some other bodily fluids. So you can, you know, well, uh, how, how somebody Ralph, says something off and you go, bleh. How but, did Ralph uh, Stedman get away with it then? Yeah. His half his cartoons well, he was wasn't drawing for, or other. for American newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, okay, also, so, also think blood is okay, right? Uh, at, no, at, at, no, no, they don't like blood. Blood, but as uh, long as, as it's not coming out of someone, if it's already lying there, like a You know, like we a get a lot of cartoons or... from uh, foreign cartoonists, particularly in the Middle East, and they like to do lots and lots of blood. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, you know, here's somebody sinking in the lake of blood, the ocean of blood. No, they don't, they don't want... Like, but like uh, Putin with his hands uh, mm. uh, with, uh, covered bloody in blood. Bloody hands. The yeah. Bloody hands kind That's of like borders what? on being a symbol. But yeah. I can't say that I've actually tracked the bloody hands printings. But uh, well, let's get some I just kind of. Fortunately, Daryl, yeah. this is watermelon. Uh, <laughs> yes. So you've got the Gallagher debate uh, with uh, Trump debating Biden, and it was a crazy. Uh, and Chris Wallace. Uh, Chris Wallace was the moderator. Mm -hmm. And he now he Taylor. Kept... Remember, we're trying to get high schools to use this, and you're making a metaphor to a 1980s comedian who has no, no, died no, a few no, years not, ago no i'm not oh yes oh i'm sorry yeah the gallagher yes i realize that and yet that particular Im comedic imagery that's this is a around. comedian who as part of his shtick would squash lots of fruit and make lots of gunk fly through the air and people in the front rows would famously wear these clear tarps because they wanted to be where the action was and have fruit land on them and i thought he was really quite funny but you know the 80s 
is maybe 45 years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much your readership, isn't it? I mean, you know, if you're trying to, I guess this would go over with kids, they wonder what it is, but people still reading the Los Angeles Times, they would understand what that reference is. They was. would. And, you know, we talk about that on these podcasts that so many of our, our references are 40, 50, 60 years mm -hmm. old, and that works for the audience. And I noticed that in the audience stats for this podcast, you see the graph, it just goes like this when you get into uh, age 50 and mm -hmm. 60 and above. And males are up here and females are down here. And it's the same for newspapers. Well, I, and if, you're, if I, you're looking about uh, high school students, you're trying to appeal to high school students. I have two that are just out of high school. And a lot of the kids now are rediscovering all the old comedians and they're watching Friends and Seinfeld. So it, it's sort of not as far away as you think. Like they uh -huh. do go back and they appreciate some of the old music and the old style comedians. So the uh, references isn't as lost as you might think. So. That's great. You ever catch them reading a newspaper? Uh, <laughs> Darryl, <laughs> Maybe I online. Know, yeah. I think <laughs> even if nobody's seen Gallagher, I think that particular, I just think that reference is kind of stuck, held on even mm -hmm. if they don't even know who he is. Plus, there's a, there's a lot of, I know that a, a, for, for younger audiences, carnival sideshow kind of comedy is pretty big. Mm. Daryl, do, do you have any young cartoonists, young female cartoonists? <laughs> or are they all no. white, white male, like I see the four well, people Well, you know, they the exist. <laughs> of course they exist, but they draw in a different style. They tend mm -hmm. to draw multi-panel cartoons, wordy cartoons, oh, yeah. cartoons that have more emphasis on personality and conversation that are very often introspective or autobiographical. And yeah. that doesn't work for our wide rectangle on the newspaper page. So yes, yeah. you know, if you go on the web and you search for women political cartoonists, you'll find them, but you don't find them that fit in our spot. And I can kind of understand why they're not motivated to accept all of the constraints that we have. You know, this is really very restrictive thing that we do to fit into this space, to minimize the words, to describe stories in the news that you expect people to know about because of the context of where they're seeing it. I can see why cartoonists don't want to accept all of those restraints on their work for the pittance that we get paid for what we do so yeah. it makes sense that we don't have young cartoonists of course young cartoonists exist they don't want to take on our shackles climb into our tar pit <laughs> with the other dinosaurs here you've got the rocket men contemplating Ooh. their navels this is a wonderful cartoon uh their navels lots of, of course lots of the, button, <laughs> the, the button that launches the nuclear missiles uh and this of course, is hilarious a, uh, mm -hmm. well thank you and of course trump had referred to kim as a little rocket man Mm -hmm. at the UN uh, right. and his UN speech. So that's what gave me the idea for this. Well, I think this is very funny. It mm -hmm. looks like something editors wouldn't want to print, but I can't really <laughs> identify that there's something in there that I should say that. I don't know. Get they kind were. of down toward Trump's leg. Oh, all right. <laughs> I like the little Diet Coke touch there, too. Thank you. <laughs> Here you've got uh, Donald Trump playing three-card Monty. Um, you know, when I lived in New York in the 1970s, <laughs> there was a lot of three-card Monty yeah. going on on the street. And uh, you don't see it anymore. And I wonder if kids now would know about three-card Monty. <laughs> well, yeah. anyway, three-card Monty is a rigged game to cheat people who uh, walk by and get, get caught up in your pitch on the street, which should be glib and lively. And they think they see the card that's the, the one that they should pick, but they're tricked this, because none of them and, are oh this is i guess pretty early on in trump's presidency where they start looking to his foundation and you know how i guess a very little amount of it was actually going to anything it ties into the whole trump casino thing too so i think it oh, yeah. works on a couple levels there so. yeah thank you yeah the yeah, street really. huckster. Actually, is, is Three Card Monty a New York thing? You know, I moved to New York from California in the 1970s. So I got out of college and I had never seen Three Card Monty before I got to Times Square. Well, we, we stayed there at the Rubens and I did see a game. So there, there's the odd one still going, I think, in New York. So. But uh, never in Calgary, I would bet. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've seen, no. Maybe I should start one up. Here you've got toddler Trump saying, ga, ga, goo, goo, NATO, Putin, uh, jumping on his bouncy world ball. 
and drooling. You know, every Trump so yeah. far has been drooling. You know, um, um, I have liked and disliked quite a few presidents, but Trump is the one who disgusts me. I just find him despicable mm -hmm. and I just can't stand him. And I don't know that it's maybe a better cartoonist, <laughs> but it's something that I just have to get in there one way or another. You know, he's <laughs> gross to me. Yeah, yes, this was yes. funny. This Trump clown is is hilarious. He's just kind of uh, looming over Hillary. Remember in his debate with Hillary, mm -hmm. he stood right behind her and loomed threateningly in a way that many women viewers thought was uh, misogynistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is funny. I think that reference may have gotten a little lost with time. Oh, yes. Uh, although I sort of thought it when I thought of drawing this, I thought of that horrible movie, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah, this was also, this was equally a dig at Hillary. This was a dig at both of them. You know, I, I'm not letting her off the hook in any way here. The, the likeliness so have... of, of Hillary is, is amazing. No, it's Thank really, you. Uh, yeah. Thank so you've you. got Hillary in, in front of this giant evil Trump clown, and Hillary says, Four score and seven elections ago, I spoke publicly and I spoke privately. I don't see that as a dig against Hillary. She's she's dressed up like Abe Lincoln saying yes. four score and seven. I mean, but uh, you're, the, you're the, saying that she's more presidential. Well, I suppose you could look at it that way. But again, a lost reference is that she was kind of talking about regarding her emails, about talking publicly and privately. And, and of course, Republicans seized on that. So she wasn't making her political situation at the moment any easier for herself. Well, I look at this as a very pro-Hillary cartoon. You've also got him drooling again. <laughs> <laughs> I find Hillary really difficult to draw, so I think Taylor's one of the yeah. well, best <laughs> caricaturists out there, so well, I, 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 I admire so much, when people can pull it off. So, so here you got Trump holding up the Bible. Remember uh, the discussion about him holding up the Bible? He held the Bible up upside down, and <laughs> as he was being very disturbing in the way he dealt with the protesters around the White House. And here he's holding up the Bible saying, Why is the Bible my favorite book? It's all the stories about mammon. I love the mammon. I have so much mammon. Your head will spin. Well, that's very <laughs> funny. Lovely drawing. It looks like a pencil drawing. It, it is. It's colored pencil. Uh, uh oh, um, is that drool again? It is. Here you've got Trump loving the flag, the Confederate battle flag. Well, that was simply based on a photo of him, exactly how he was giving some speech, not at a big rally at a smaller event. And of course, he, he whipped up the crowd and they went over mm -hmm. and, and hugged the American flag in a kind of a real creepy way. So I just turned it into the Confederate flag. Well, these are okay. his people. Yeah. And here he is with his kids looking very Nazi. Editors don't print Nazi references. Yes, especially Nazi references with drool. Yes, with drool. <laughs> I thought this one was very interesting. Waist deep in the big hairy with all the troops marching into Trump's hair and falling out as casualties oh, yeah. of war and caskets. And a reference that only the oldest would get to a Pete Seeger song, protest song which was called Waist Deep in the Big Muddy at the height of the Vietnam War, or the depths of the Vietnam War, I should say. And at the time, Trump, you'll remember that when Obama was president early on, said there would be a surge in Iraq and Afghanistan. Then we'd, after the surge, there was a time limit. He was criticized that there'd be the end of the surge. And when Trump first entered office, he sort of did the same thing. And that's why the whole idea of, sort of going back and getting mired again in an unwinnable war. Well, this is a lovely drawing, and uh, I think it's great fun. Great fun! <laughs> you know, I love these backs of the heads caricatures, and there's just something charming about how you can describe someone so well with the back of their head if you know them that well. Well, you know, in, I started drawing cartoons professionally at the very tail end of the Nixon administration, literally the last few months. And of course, I've caricatured all of our presidents, but in the ones that have been that have served while I've been drawing, the one who the one I like the most in terms of a face, a head to draw, has been Obama. Because, and I think I don't know, I I drew well over two hundred very detailed caricatures of him, which is a lot. But there was something about the angles, the planes in his head. I'm glad he kept his. It kind of emphasized that with very the very close cropped hair, and you know, to me, Trump is a mess. I mean, he's fun to draw, but he's a big mess. But Obama uh, was the opposite of that, uh, but, but always a very interesting angle, no matter how he posed. And, that, uh, and this, for me, uh, um, I saw this picture of the two of them, I think, you know, right after Trump's election, and I said, I got to do something with that. Well, that's, that's nice. really a lot of fun. Very nice. Yeah. He is difficult, though, right, Trump? He has characteristics, but to really nail him is, uh, is difficult. He can do something that looks like Trump, but doing yeah. him really well, that's, yeah, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here you have Trump peeing in the America pool, and he says, <laughs> yeah, Comey's a leaker. Of course, this is one of those bodily fluids that the editors don't like. 
Well, it, well <laughs> it's done a lot, though. In fact, I've seen a number of pee and pool cartoons. On, uh, you know, uh, editors, I, it, cartoonists love to draw pee and <laughs> blood. Those are our favorite bodily fluids. Like, as you, you know said, what? these really tend to take off online. Like, you, someone will post it and it goes viral usually, but the papers shy away from it for some reason. <laughs> yeah. The different audiences, I, that's a great frustration for us. So, here you have Trump, the pig wallowing in the mud, and it says he gained a massive amount of weight and it was a real problem. This, this was actually in reference, he made, a, he made that comment about some woman, a celebrity, I think, or something while he was, or, or uh, either that or some woman who had come out, maybe it was some woman who had charged him with uh, harassment. And uh, that was his response about her. So I just used it against him. Well, this one was fun to draw. Here he is poop on his head. <laughs> I don't know, Taylor. I, I, sometimes you're drawing these just for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drawing them for you, Daryl, not for your paper editors. Just well, I you. do enjoy them. Here you got Trump as William Howard Taft, who famously got stuck in a bathtub. And I guess Trump was looking pretty much like he could be stuck in a bathtub yeah. and very William Howard Taft-like. These hair, I saw this in the other cartoons as well. You draw these hairs out of his nipples. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot unsee it now. It's well, I just <laughs> noticed that. Yeah. Well, you know, I've done that with just about everybody. Uh, <laughs> all I do is look in the mirror. <laughs> oh, Donald Trump and the birds. This was, uh, he's tearing up a treaty for migratory bird act of 1918 here you have the birds are pooping on him but uh wonderful birds i love your birds you've got two things going against this one first it's vertical and next it has yeah. poop well you can see it on your phone yes very good for the phone <laughs> nice viral cartoon here you have the trump mastodon <laughs> Uh, duty, honor, and country, and uh, General Kelly. Kelly, who was his chief of staff at the time and got bumped out for pushing back on him, thinks, so this is what I signed up for? He was going through a lot of poop at that time. No drool, though. With his no, name. elephants don't drool. No <laughs> drool. Plenty of poop. Well, actually, he's a mastodon here. Oh, okay. mastodon. Very good. All right, we're starting <laughs> off with Dave Woman. And Dave, what a wonderful Wizard of Oz cartoon you've got here. <laughs> you've got Trump the Wizard of Oz saying, I'm a rich and successful financial wizard. Huge. And you say, pay no attention to the little man behind the curtain. This is a lovely cartoon. No, oh, thank you. you know, I, I'm amazed how everyone, especially on the right, still thinks Trump's this amazing successful businessman and it's been proven over and over again that he's probably a they said he's not even a millionaire he's probably a detonaire because he's blown all his money he's bankrupted how many because like what five times now he's bankrupted casinos which would be hard to do so i always think it's like the little man behind the curtain well he once bragged he's the king of debt so yeah this is great <laughs> this is wonderful here you've Ooh, got uh, a guy at the doctor and his uh, ekg looks like donald trump's <laughs> signature which is uh, hilarious because his signature uh, does look like that and the doctor says, your anxiety levels are through the roof. Any idea what might be causing this? It's very funny. I, I, this is one of the first cartoons I think I did uh, when I uh, started in, what was it, 2018, late 2018. And uh, yeah, a lot of people didn't catch that that was a signature. So uh, mm. I was thinking maybe I should have pulled back a bit and made it a little bigger. But once you, you know it's a signature, then it, it all makes sense. Yeah, it's perfect. Don't change a thing. Okay. So here you got Trump the iceberg and the Republican Party Titanic is just about to hit it. And Politico says Trump is adrift and the Republican Party Titanic says full steam ahead as they're about to crash and sink. Those are wonderful nice, cartoons. Nice Trumpberg. Oh. Thanks. Yeah, I kind of liked how that turned out. That's why I included this one. This was sort of when they had a very good opportunity to cut ties with him and and right. I think they would have been much better off now if they would have just done what they needed to do back then. But they went full steam ahead. I don't know that they were ever really able to cut ties with him. I think this was back right after January 6th when they actually made some oh. speeches and showed a little bit of spine. And then the next thing you know, Kevin McCarthy's going down to Florida to kiss the ring. So, Boy. Yeah. So here you have Biden on Trump's mind. And Biden says, Donald, it's your old pal, Sleepy Joe. I know you're a landlord, but for the next few years, I'm going to live here rent free. And that's no malarkey. You know, in response to our, our last podcast, the Trump podcast, I got a bunch of email from conservatives outraged that there were no Biden cartoons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can we can do a Biden podcast. Yeah. Why not? 
Yeah. I, yeah, I, I just find I think dull. you could have the most <laughs> Yeah, I, I think you could have the most vanilla person on the Democrat in power and they would find a way to demonize that person. So, so here you have Trump at the doctor showing an x-ray of his Achilles heel <laughs> and the doctor says, "I know you said you don't have a racist bone in your body, but we did however find some racist bone spurs." <laughs> of course, Trump got out of serving in Vietnam by saying that he had bone spurs that never seemed to bother him through the rest of his life. Dave, did you did you uh, Google uh, X-ray for bone spur? On yeah, I, I cheated on this one. I did actually use an X-ray, and then I drew around it a little bit. So I just thought some doctor somewhere is going to say, "Hey, that's not a." Yeah, no, that's that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I believe I believe this is bone spur. Yeah. So here you have Trump with Boris and Natasha from the Bullwinkle Show. Um, do kids watch the Bullwinkle Show now? I think so. They still know it. Yeah. Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. Cartoon, Good. The Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network. So, yeah. So yeah. Trump is passing out classified documents to Boris and Natasha. Trump the person, Natasha the woman, Boris the man, security camera the <laughs> camera, and FBI watching it on TV. That's very funny. Boris and Natasha show up in uh, political cartoons quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they sort of fit perfectly with the whole Russian spy thing. So. Okay. Here you have Trump and a Republican elephant, and the. They're looking at a cognitive assessment test. Identify the GOP elephant. The elephant says, it's okay. I no longer recognize it either. Guess the three-letter word. That's funny. They are unrecognizable. At that time, they were that the, this was done, they were making a huge deal out of how Trump identified a giraffe on the cognitive test. And I just thought that he was bragging about it, saying, nobody's ever done it so well. Yeah. I just couldn't believe it. It's like, how do you parody that? You know, it's like... Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So here you have Dr. Seuss. Thing one and thing two are individual one and individual junior two. And the cat in the hat says, and this mess is so big and so deep and so tall, we cannot pick it up. There's no way at all. That's excellent. And I should mention that you are a prolific children's book Ooh. illustrator. Yeah, this was very fun to draw. And of course, grew up with Dr. Seuss, so it was sort of a little tribute to his work. But hopefully, if he were alive to see it, he would enjoy it. I'm just, I'm just seeing the individual one, individual two, the reference. Yeah, Those I mean, are, of, of course, one, references to the lawsuit where they didn't right. mention who the people were, uh -huh. but you knew very well who they were. So mm -hmm. they're being let out of the box to cause all this trouble. So there's all kinds of nice metaphor going on in here. Sorry, Dave, I don't really know who is individual two. And... Well, at that time, this was was back right when Trump was identified as individual one and then Don Jr. was in trouble oh, as well. Yeah. So they said he could be individual two, but yeah, it's yeah. hard to remember back so much stuff happens, you know. Okay. Yeah, I don't I, kind of I don't it, remember so who these the other unnamed people exactly turned yeah. out to be. I think the speculation was back then that he was in big trouble, but he never did uh, never really went anywhere. So here you got Trump holding his phone with his tiny hands and he yells, I need you to find me 11,780 get out of jail free cards. This, of course, is referencing his infamous phone call to the Georgia Secretary of State to urge him to cheat on the election count. And multiple indictments now as well and legal woes. But as you guys have mentioned, I just think Trump is a gift to cartoonist. I just love caricaturing him. So even though you get a little tired of it after a while, I just... Uh... What are your thoughts? on the small hands <laughs> <laughs> well it's just uh it's part of what you have to do now right it's it's just everybody knows about it or like the long tie everybody mentions it so yeah. i can't have him doing like i think i had to do one cartoon where it wouldn't have made sense because he was doing something so i thought okay i have to make the hands at least big enough to see what he was doing but nice. i can tell it's getting to be nighttime for hio yeah, kind of. Uh, we've been watching the sun set as you yeah. <laughs> So I think that's it for us. Anything more for you guys to add? No, it was fun. Thank you very yeah, much. Enjoyed seeing everybody. Yeah, nice everybody to meet you both. Yeah, good to meet both. all of you. Same here. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Well, thank you very Great much work. for joining me. And that will be it for today's Kegelcast. Come back to the next one. Be sure to subscribe and like. If you are on a regular podcast platform listening to this in audio only, it's fun to see the cartoons. So come to kegelcast.com or youtube.com slash at kegelcast and watch the video. I think we're going to do some more of these Trump podcasts. So I will see you again soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Daryl. Goodbye. Nice see you soon. You, Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>